Good morning and welcome to Dynasty 365, where the film will set you free. Today we're going to be going over the news of the NFL, then we'll talk about Divine Ozigbo and his situation in New Orleans, we'll talk about his measurables and his film, my verdict on where he should be taken in your rookie drafts, and then the songs of the day. Reuben Foster was a former first round pick of the 49ers and a middle linebacker, is now on the Redskins, and yesterday he tore his ACL and possibly has artery damage. His season is already done, his career is now up in the air until we know more about the artery damage. If you've got him in your IDP leagues, I'd hold him until you hear more news, and even though he does have some off the field concerns. He is so talented and it's been so long that he produced that with this news, if I did not own him, I would offer a late pick to the owner and hope that I can stash him on my injured reserve until next season. That is pretty risky without knowing the full extent of the damage to his knee, but that's why I think you can get away with pulling this move right now and hope that he recovers fully, which would be a almost guaranteed linebacker one for me, just based on talent alone and his brief history of production that he did have when he was playing for the 49ers. Brashad Perriman is reportedly in rhythm with Jameis Winston. He did have limited success as a deep threat in Cleveland last half of last year, but I'd still be staying away until we actually see it in preseason. He's currently behind Mike Evans, OJ Howard, Chris Godwin, and Cameron Brait for targets at a minimum. So if you are still holding him, I would use this piece of news to try and sell him for pretty much anything you can get. In more injury news for the Redskins, head coach Jay Gruden said that Darius Geis should be ready for training camp. It does make sense as it's almost 12 months removed from an ACL tear. If he is taking longer than what's being reported, I would be selling Geis. I've never seen a running back hold so much value after so many negative things have happened to him from the pre-draft rankings last year until now. Literally everything has been bad news for him and he's barely dropped in price. So if he's taking longer to come back than training camp, I guarantee you there's still a Geist believer in your league that will pay more than he's worth. Over the weekend, Ezekiel Elliott was handcuffed at a music festival in Las Vegas, but he was not charged with any crime. Apparently, he shoved a guy over a railing or something. There's a small possibility of a suspension, but it's pretty unlikely. However, this is a pattern of bad judgment and aggressive behavior off the field for Zeke. After Kareem Hunt and Tyreek Hill, are we still going to ignore the warning signs of poor decisions and mental instability just because they help your fantasy team? He's already been suspended from the league for being unable to resist making poor judgment decisions in the real world, and he's still doing things like this. Because of this pattern of behavior, I would be selling Ezekiel Elliott because right now you can still get max value, even with this news, because most people aren't going to think he's getting suspended, but I'm more worried about the long-term value of a guy that keeps making choices like this. I'm not saying to give him away for free. I understand he's a rare commodity in the fantasy landscape, but that's why I would be selling now. You can get a lot of value for Zeke, and he clearly has not shown that he's getting better at making off-the-field decisions, so I would be cashing out right now.
Cardinals wide receiver Christian Kirk is apparently near 100% recovering from his broken foot. You should always be cautious of foot injuries with wide receivers, but I'm not too worried about this one specifically. If you can still buy him, buy him. I bet his price is a little lower than normal with all the receivers that they just brought in in the draft. That's all for the news today. Now let's talk about the situation that Divino Zigbo is in on the New Orleans Saints. At wide receiver, they've got Michael Thomas, who's a stud. Traquan Smith is a deep threat and second-year player that I do like on film, but he did have some consistency issues. They've also got Ted Ginn, who is fast and old. Cameron Meredith, who still hasn't recovered from his ACL tear and is an unknown. And then they have Emmanuel Butler, who I did the situation breakdown on during a previous episode, and I would recommend checking that one out. I believe it's daily episode 5, but I will be updating the titles of the old episodes to make it easier for you to find things like this. At tight end, they've got Jared Cook, and I'm not going to spend too much time talking about some of these guys because I already did on that previous episode, so check the backlogs. It's probably either episode 3 or 5 of the daily episodes. At running back, they've got Alvin Kamara. They just signed Latavius Murray to a two-year deal, and of course, Divino Zigbo. Quarterback is Drew Brees, who will retire sometime soon, it seems like, but he does have historically elite production, and the team has shifted to a more run-heavy approach. They had the third best passing offense last year, were second in yards per drive, second in points per drive, 12th in total offensive yards, and Brees threw for 32 touchdowns. The offensive line was second in creating yards for the running back and ninth in power plays, third in pass protection, and the team was first in the NFL in time of possession per drive. The Saints defense was great to good last year and without many real changes should be about the same this season. Their head coach is Sean Payton, who has an historical record of offensive success. And with the Kamara-Adrian Peterson situation when Kamara was a rookie, clearly will play the best player over an established veteran. So who is Divino Zigbo, the player? On film, he was my pre-draft running back three, which means that he had the highest combination of traits of any player not in my absolute top tier for immediate NFL production. He is 5'11", 233 pounds, with 9.25 inch hands, and is 22.64 years old. He had the highest weight divided by height of any running back scouted, but he did have the 8th worst hand size divided by height of the running backs, and there there's no recorded wingspan for him because he was not invited to the combine. At his pro day, he ran a 4.54 second 40 yard dash, 37 inch vert, 124 inch broad jump, and put up 19 reps on the bench. He did not run a three cone drill or a 20 yard shuttle, but I do think he would have done well in those drills and we'll explain why as we get into the film. The good things that Ozigbo showed on film were that he's a no-nonsense north and south runner. He breaks tackles with both power and agility. He's good in pass protection, follows his blocks patiently, has good burst, good top speed, and good open field vision. He can make defenders miss in the hole. He has no wasted movement after a jump or a jump cut into running. So that means he does a jump cut and immediately bursts without taking unnecessary steps. He has good hands, great side-to-side agility for his size, no hesitation when he sees the hole, good contact balance, has the vision to read both zone and man blocking schemes. He consistently makes good decisions, runs good routes, but he didn't run a very wide variety of routes, shows good catch concentration, consistently makes the first guy miss, and churns his legs for extra yards with power. He also only had one fumble on film. No player is perfect, so let's go through areas where Ozugbo is lacking in his skill set. He doesn't know what to do as a receiver on scramble drills or broken plays. He has imperfect vision, but it's still really good. Issues decelerating quickly at times. He's poor at cut blocks. He does hesitate on which hole he decides to choose at times. He needs better form in pass pro, better awareness in pass pro, and he can lose some side-to-side battles in pass protection from time to time. When he's lined up as a wide receiver, he false steps. Ozigbo doesn't trust his own speed to the edge enough. I do think this is because of his reported body transformation 
transformation he underwent from his junior to his senior year, and I think he got faster, but his brain wasn't really adjusted to that increase in speed yet, so he would cut it up early, even when he looked like he was going to beat that defender to the edge. And he did beat many defenders to the outside on film. But with that said, he couldn't outrun Devin Bush to the edge when they played Michigan. Now, Devin Bush was the number 10 pick in the draft, so that's not really a horrible thing, but it's showing that he doesn't have elite speed. Based on all of that information, where do we take him in our rookie drafts? Well, he has great traits for immediate production, has a great landing spot, becoming the instant running back three on that depth chart. If one of either Kamara or Murray go down, Ozigbo will immediately be fantasy relevant. He already has a chance to steal work from Latavius Murray, regardless of an injury. Sean Payton benched Adrian Peterson for Alvin Kamara, so let's not pretend he wouldn't bench Latavius Murray. Some coaches and general managers definitely will play the guy that they're paying more money to first, but Sean Payton has already shown that he's not really one of those coaches. He seems to be more of the best player will play type of coach, which is how I think all coaches should coach. Now he's only going to bench Latavius Murray if Ozigbo is playing better, so I'm not really predicting that Ozigbo beats out Latavius Murray straight up because Murray did look pretty good when he was on the Vikings better than he usually did. If I was on the clock in the late second or the early third, I'd have no hesitation picking Divino Zigbo, especially true if you have Alvin Kamara. But if I knew someone else in my league was a Nebraska fan and was eyeing him, I'd have no problem taking him in the early second as I just believe in his talent on film that much and truly believe the NFL missed out on him. Again, my bias as a Nebraska fan honestly has no impact on this decision, but I do think it helped me to be clued into him a little more because of course I check the Nebraska guys to see how they stack up. But Ozigbo has a rare combination of traits with someone of his frame. He also wasn't running to the ground during college. I think his lack of college production is what kept him from being drafted, but I'm really not concerned about the undrafted free agent status of Divine Ozigbo. I love the player. I love the situation. I see a quick path to immediate production, even though it's not there right now. So that's why I'm all in on Ozigbo in New Orleans. And with that, the songs of the day. Your happy song is Donald Trump by Mac Miller, R.I.P., and Show Me How to Live by Audio Slave is your football song of the day. As always, those YouTube links are found in the episode description. If you want to support this show, if you feel I've provided value, if you want to hear it continue, please go to patreon.com slash 365 underscore dynasty. Thanks to all my current Patreon subscribers. Thanks for helping me improve the show with your feedback. Thanks to everyone listening from all over America and all over the world. You've been listening to Dynasty 365, where the film will set you free. Sure.